What's up guys? Welcome back to the garage. This is the final assembly of our 904 transmission. I'm going to start with the servos and the accumulator. We're going to go from there. We're going to get this thing back together. All right, let's do it. I'm going to start with the easiest one first. It's your second gear accumulator. Uh, it's the one from Cope Racing Transmissions. Has double sealing rings, top and bottom, and the built-in blocker rod. There's your factory one. Just a single top and bottom. You could bake your own blocker rod out of a bolt, but this one's better. It is billet and it will seal a lot better with those two rings. Next, we're gonna do the low reverse servo kit that I got from CRT. It is a billet aluminum one piece lower, a heavier duty spring and the heavy duty retainer. You can see how much beefier that retainer is. Uh, this lower cast, piece, cast aluminum piece, the stock one is known to crack under high fluid pressure from say a reverse manual valve body. So that's why we're putting this in. These can be a little tricky to install by yourself, but we'll see what we can do here. All right, they do flight you, but you can get it in with one person. I used an old yoke, fit perfectly at the top to uh, just push it down by hand. All right, next is gonna be the second gear servo. Uh, this is actually an A and A piece. I did get it from Cope Racing Transmissions, but it is an A and A. I guess maybe Cope does not actually make these. Uh, it is better than the factory piece. It is billet and it is double sealing ring there on that bottom and a heavier spring. Okay, that will also fight you. Having two people here is a lot easier, but I don't, so you just gotta do it yourself. All right, next is gonna be, gonna do the output shaft and start getting the back half of this transmission together. Uh, planetaries, lower reverse band. I already replaced those two cast iron ring ceiling rings on the back of the there the output shaft i like sticking that band in there first and the drum that band was soaking in transmission fluid days you want to make sure your thrust washers do not fall off when you're doing this I put Vaseline on the surface kind of helps stick them fast
snap ring. All right, next is the low reverse lever. Got that O-ring replaced already. Got a little clean transmission fluid on there. That goes in through the back of the case here. Once the extension housing is on, uh, it won't allow that uh, pin to slide out or anything. It's the only thing that holds it in. All right, for the next part, I like to sit the transmission up on end. Uh, you have gravity helping you out here. I'm gonna just sit the second gear band down in. That had been soaking in transmission fluid. You wanna sit that down in first because once the clutch packs are in, you're not going to be able to get to, it just won't fit down in. And then also you want to install your thrust washer in the very front of the output shaft there, whether it's the metal kind or the fiber kind there. I like the metal kind. The fiber ones sometimes fail. Then you want to sit your Clutch pack assemblies, uh, the front one, you gotta sit it down on until it's all the way fully engaged. And then you wanna sit, gently sit this down in. Sometimes it takes a little bit of spinning and finessing to get it all the way. Okay, you'll know that it's all the way down when the top here is flush. These lugs on the sun shell and the clutch pack. You wanna make sure they're all flush the whole way around. That means it's fully seated down in. I'm going to install the second gear lever. That is a heavy duty billet piece uh, compared to the factory one. You can see it's a little beefier and it's a 4.2 ratio. Just drop that pivot pin down in the front there in the bell housing. And then you can install a little pipe plug that holds that pivot pin. And install that. A little bit of thread tape on the threads. have the band adjuster there threaded into the case I'll back it out a little bit got a heavy duty band strut it's a lot beefier than the factory ones these are known to bend too I've actually had one bend slightly
Okay. I just like to snug it up for right now. Do the adjustment at the end. All right. Next, I'm going to get the front pump down in. All right, for the front pump, uh, I made two dowels. They're just out of 5 16 bolts. And then you want, it'll just keep everything lined up when you go together here. Just put the new gasket down on there. That keeps that lined up. And then the pump, you just wanna gently drop it down over those dowels as well. And then just, if it takes a little bumping down on. I don't like to draw the pump down with the bolt. I like to just kind of like tap it down on to make sure it is going down on straight and everything. All right, I replaced the washers that come with your gasket kit. They're a little uh, metal washer that's coated in like a rubber. I replaced them and torqued these uh, front pump bolts in a star pattern to 170 inch pounds. Next, we're going to get the trans down off of here and install the extension housing and measure the end play of the input shaft. I got the new gasket on the back of the transmission there that came in the gasket kit. Uh, you'll need a snap ring pliers. There is a snap ring right here that will have to go. You'll expand the snap ring and it goes locks into the groove on the output shaft bearing. Just gotta work that snap ring until it goes, pops over top of the bearing. Okay, in the groove and install your bolts. I put a little bit of thread tape on because five of the six bolts actually go into the transmission housing and then they get torqued to 32 foot pounds so i'll do that quick here all right i got all the extension housing bolts torqued down while we're back here i'm just gonna the little it's a little plate that uh covers up where the snap ring the access to the snap ring uh put a new cork gasket on there from the kit and it's just uh two phillips head screws that hold that down I'm sure there's a torque spec on that somewhere but i just snug them down you don't want to go too tight because you'll just smash the cork down and blow it out and then i'm just going to put this uh, speedometer gear housing in for the time being because the 41 tooth one that needs to go in my car because of the gears is actually in the other transmission in my car. So this one's only like a 29 tooth or something. There's corresponding numbers on here that line up with this dot. So 26 to 31, uh, depending on what gear you would have. Obviously, if it would be the 41 tooth, you'd line it up with the spot that has the higher numbers. All right, I got my dial indicator set up. Uh, but before I did that, I went ahead and adjusted both the bands, the second gear band and the low reverse band. Uh, you'll want to loosen the lock nuts up, uh, adjust the band adjustment bolts down to 72 inch pounds on both of the bands. And then on the second gear band, you back off the bolt two full turns the low reverse band, you back it all four full turns and then tighten those lock nuts down so your band adjustment bolt doesn't change. Then you go ahead and you have this bottomed out, the input shaft, and then you zero your gauge, give it a tug. I'm getting 30 thousandths, so that's within spec. Uh, for a 904, it's 22 
to 91 thousandths, and for a 727, it's 34 to 84. Uh, if you would have to adjust that, if it's not enough or too much, uh, you can get a kit that has these selective fiber thrust washers. They go on the back of the pump, in between the pump and the clutch drum. Uh, it will adjust that clearance. I just used the one that was in the transmission, and that was good for me. All right, the last thing you want to do before you bolt the valve body on is you want to air check uh, your transmission. Uh, this rear hole is for the rear servo. You just want to give it some air pressure. Make sure it applies. That holds for your front servo here. And then these two holes, this is the front clutch back, this is the rear clutch back. And you want to be able to hear the thud of that clutch engaging to make sure everything's working all right before you bolt that trans or uh, valve body back on so you know your trans is going to be good when you put it in your car uh, basically just drop it on then i'm not actually going to bolt it on at this time but I got to switch the park rod out of my old trans to the new valve body. This is a reverse manual I got from Cope. Uh, you know, it's three front bolts, three rear, and these four over top of the second gear accumulator. Uh, you want to torque them down to 96 inch pounds, uh, kind of doing like a star pattern. You might want to start with lower torque first and just kind of work up to that 96 inch pounds. You don't want to warp or crack your... Uh, your valve body or uh, distort anything on the transmission. So, all right, that's gonna wrap up our 904 rebuild series. Uh, I'm sure there might be something I left out or some detail that maybe I missed. I'm not a professional at this. This is, you know, just a kind of a hobby type thing I do. Uh, if there's any questions you would have, you can leave them in the comments for me. Uh, if you also want to check out some other good transmit, like at home transmission rebuild videos, uh, ch uh, check out Bad Tree Productions, which you've probably already heard of them if you're in the Mopar scene. Uh, they have a bunch of good uh, tranny rebuild videos, 904 and 727. So just wanted to let you know about that. And uh, as long as the weather is permitting, I'm going to get this transmission in. And there'll be a follow-up video on the road test, uh, just testing out this low gear set and the manual valve body. So that'll be new to me. So I uh, appreciate you watching, following along with this series, and I'll catch you next time.